All right, guys, what is up? And welcome back to another episode of America's Hometown Horror. And welcome back to Found Footage February for week two. And uh, we have another quote unquote movie for you this week. We should, <laughs> yeah, we should call it like Found Footage February. Found Footage February. This is a target. This is a target. And I'm joined by my esteemed co-host, Kat and Andrew. What is up, you guys? Hello. Hello, How are we doing? Top of the muffin to you both. Top of the muffin to you. All right. So, as I mentioned, we are back to talk about another found footage movie. And that movie this morning is The Last Broadcast, uh, which is a pretty big deep cut that a lot of people might not have heard about. Um, but before we jump into that, guys, it's not very often that we do a news segment anymore. But I do have wow. a couple of things that popped up that are, are, are of interest to us. So I'll run through them quickly and just get your quick thoughts on them. I know we're on a time crunch before Andrew has to drop off here. So, uh, first things first, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the new sequel as of this recording, is out and available to stream on Netflix. I'm assuming... Kat, I know you haven't. I know I haven't. Andrew, you have not watched this movie. I yet, thought, correct? yeah, I thought it was in theaters. I didn't yeah. realize this. <laughs> nope. So now I'll be watching. I'm good. That's good. To yep, know. it's on Netflix. Uh, getting mixed reviews, but uh, don't let that sway your opinion. I think you should definitely watch it. It looks pretty cool, and I'm sure that we will be watching it soon. And I think when we uh, record next week on As Above, So Below, we'll mm-hmm. probably give our uh, our thoughts on the movie. Or who knows? Maybe if it's good enough, we'll do a whole episode on Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I feel and like we do... should. Okay. Just saying. We'll see. We'll see. We'll watch. New. We'll watch, and then we'll reconvene and, and, uh, and figure it out. We could do a bonus episode for Found Footage February. We could. We certainly could. Bonus. 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 You said boners. You say boners. Bonus. Bonus. I mean, we could always do a boner episode. Also, this is our first recording since the Super Bowl last weekend, and we got two new trailers that are of note. And one of those trailers that is of note is for Nope, the new Jordan Peele movie, uh, which, Andrew, I know you and I were talking about this a little bit yesterday. Kat, uh, I think you saw this when it first aired. Mm -hmm. But uh, after the details of the plot were kind of, uh, there were none out there, looks like Nope is going to be Jordan Peele's take on a UFO slash alien invasion movie. I gotta say, speaking of boners, I had a huge one. Oh man! After watching that trailer, <laughs> uh, I, I think that, that this is the the perfect type of material for Jordan Peele, um, and I'm very excited for it. I think it looks really cool with the trailer that they dropped, and also Andrew, you and I were talking about that the uh, this also is not confirmed yet, but there's speculation out there that the title of the movie Nope could actually be an acronym. Uh, for not of planet Earth. Well, that would make more, makes sense more sense than, than the just name. name. Well, yeah. I said the name. Maybe it's you know they see it and they go, oh, yeah, nope, and they yeah. just run away. Yeah, yeah. yeah like nope, no. yeah. us, not like get out. I mean, very short titles yeah. from Jordan Peele. Yep, <laughs> three letters. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. And uh, speaking of bonuses and boners, Andrew, I know you were very, very excited for the Jurassic World oh, Dominion baby, trailer. That looks so good. I can't wait to see that. Yeah. Pretty cool if they get the cast of the original movie to come back. So you get uh, Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum, Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, pretty awesome. much everybody. They all look great, too. Yeah, they all look awesome. So. I mean, Sam Neill's been a stud for forever. So. Yeah. yeah, dude, Goldblum's like... Uh, got Goldblum old looks better now. now. He like, doesn't yeah, 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 I know, right? I feel like he looks better now than he did in the original. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Okay, so that uh, that takes care of those. Also, we got some news that dropped yesterday, that uh, some Stranger Things news. So, season four is going to be broken into two parts, which this is a new trend for TV series that I can't fucking stand. <laughs> Specifically, uh, Netflix TV series, because they just did the same thing with Ozark. So, Stranger Things season four is going to be broken into two parts. Uh, part one, part, or excuse me, volume one is what they're calling it. It's going to premiere on May 27th. So coming up very quickly, and then Volume 2 will drop on July 1st. Okay, so at least it's not a huge... Not a huge gap. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be getting Stranger Things very soon, which is uh, great news. I'm super excited for it. And we also got confirmed uh, that Stranger Things, no shit, has been renewed for Season 5, which will be the last season. So Stranger uh, Things God. will be ending after Season 5. You're the only person on Earth that feels that way. I don't <laughs> know why you don't like Stranger <laughs> Things, and it drives me fucking it's crazy. It's just... I feel like it's so it's just too strange hyped for up. you. No, it's just I don't. 
I don't know. It's too hyped up for me. It's fine. I don't hate Stranger Things. I like watching it. But is it my favorite? No. I Do I love it half as much as you do? Absolutely not. I think you hate Stranger Things. I've I never just... heard you say one good thing about it, ever. <laughs> like, I don't even know why you watch it. All you do is complain about it. Maybe I'll it. watch it again and have a new perspective. I would. I mean, it's been like I don't three know, years watch since the, first the last season, season of Stranger Things and not. I think like, I've seen the first season at least it. twice. No, I haven't. You you would not rewatch it with me. But I actually, I mean, the the most recent season was at least two years ago. So right. I definitely, I'm why gonna I'm gonna rewatch the whole thing. I think, before this. When so. did you say it's coming out again? When May the host May twenty seventh. <laughs> yeah, when, when the host isn't paying attention. May twenty um, seventh. Well, we would have time to rewatch the series then before. Yeah, of course, of course. So we can do that. Stranger Things, baby. Go for, for it. <laughs> go, go for it. Go for it. Andrew, speaking of boners, the chief content officer at HBO held a press event earlier this week and confirmed that they are in development on season four of True Detective. Yeah, baby. Woo, daddy. Oh, man, oh, man. I was so excited. It's like a day of great news. Yep, no detail. See, this is like... Sometimes we get no news, like nothing of note, and then we're getting all this shit at yeah. once. So I'm Very like, all right, this, we, need, we need to cover this as quickly as it is. But, um, oh, man, nothing nothing gets me as excited as True Detective news. So uh, I can't wait to see what they do with it. Hopefully it's something good. True Detective, give me all the True Detective, baby. And finally, in a piece of news that might only interest me because, um, Kat, I know you've probably seen or heard me in the background playing these games. Andrew, you're not, you're not a huge video game guy. Uh, there is a Bioshock movie in the works at Netflix. Never heard of Bioshock? Uh, I think I've heard of it. I've never... It's I don't cool know to what watch it's about. you play it. It's, I like it. It's a... They've been trying to do a movie for a long time based on these games. It's like a sci-fi, horror, dystopian. It's a really cool concept, and the games are a lot of fun to play. Uh, and they're finally going to do a movie on Netflix. Cool. So, Bioshock, coming to Netflix. All right. And like I mentioned, we are on crunch time here, so let's talk the last broadcast, uh, which is a found footage movie, obviously, because we're in found footage February, that came out in the year of our Lord, 1998, one full year prior to the Blair Witch Project. I thought you uh, said two. No, I thought it was 97, it's actually 98. Okay. So Blair Witch was 99, this was 98. Fair. Um, a lot of people incorrectly think that this movie uh, influenced the Blair Witch Project, and the Blair Witch kind of ripped this off. But it turns out this movie was actually in development in 1993, way before the Blair Witch Project was. So this is kind of one of the, the first found footage movies, aside from, like, yeah, if you want to go as far back as, like, Cannibal Holocaust in the 80s. But, yeah, so probably the first notable found footage movie of the 90s, the last broadcast, which basically is a uh, documentary-style movie that tells the story of the hosts of a paranormal cable television series that go into the Pine Barrens in New Jersey in search of the Jersey Devil and never return alive. And uh, you kind of see, I mean, do you see, you, you kind of see what unfolds and what happens to them and what ultimately their fate was. Uh, and then, yeah, Andrew, I know this was your pick. So why don't you uh, give us your thoughts on what you thought of the last broadcast? Um, I think it's a it's a decent movie. There's nothing special about it other than the fact that it kind of, um, you know, it like set the stage for these types of found footage movies, in my opinion seeing as it was the first, other than, like you said, Cannibal Holocaust. Um, not nearly on the same level as Blair Witch, like, don't get me wrong. Like, the ending, they kind of butchered the ending, I thought, in this movie. But mm -hmm. I think the general feel throughout, they do a really good job of making you feel like it's a documentary that's actually happening. Um, the acting's, meh, mediocre. Ooh, I, th I thought the acting was pretty poor. <laughs> but like, I think that was, well, I think some, that was of the act, some of the acting was pretty poor. Well, you got to take it to effect to the... They work for a cable television station, so yeah. they're not going to be like they're, yeah. They're probably actors. they're probably hamming it up a little bit on purpose. Yeah, a you little know? bit. Some of the acting was decent. Some of the actors, like the girl who did the like the video footage, the video footage. I thought she was fine. Yep. Um, the documentarian, he was all right. He seemed like the type to yeah. make a documentary. Kind yeah. Of a nerdy. The nice booming voice. The booming voice there. Yep. yep. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was just I wanted us to watch this and do this movie because a lot of people, like you said. No idea this movie even exists. So I think it's good if you're going to talk about found footage, you should start with some of the predecessors to 
the ones we have now, basically. I couldn't agree more. I'm glad that we watched this, and I think this is definitely one of those movies that, you know, frequently pops up on lists of found footage horror movies that, you know, are, that you haven't seen, that you need to see, and I, I think that this is... It's definitely creepy, and this is one of those movies where I feel like the found footage aspect of it does make the movie significantly creepier. This does feel like something that would be on like the Sci-Fi Channel or the Travel Channel yeah. at like 1.30 in the morning back oh, yeah. in like 1999 <laughs> or something like that. Something that I would be watching as a teenager, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, up too late on a Saturday night, and it probably would have freaked me out back then. So I, I think in that aspect, I liked it, and I'm definitely glad that we watched it. Yeah. Kat, what about you? What did you think? Um, <laughs> Here I we hated go. it. <laughs> <laughs> I Absolutely hated That's kind of why I wanted to watch it. I was just to like, oh my god, this half. is boring, it's confusing. I'm like, I'm asking... I like, don't I'm think like, it's confusing. No, no. It's definitely like, they don't explain so much until like towards the middle or end of the movie. Like, it just... Uh, and it's, it's the total opposite of the Blair Witch Project. So... They have a narrator. They have, like, it's it's cheesy as fuck. Like, so cheesy. It's not raw at all. It's completely forced. It's staged. It's like, ugh. Oh, it was, and it was funny because Mike was like, they had a much smaller budget, which you then told me. $900. And it shows. <laughs> well, yeah. It just goes to show, too, though, what you can do with $900. Yeah. Back yeah. Then, of back course. then, yeah. That'd but, probably be like $2,000, $3,000 now. Yeah. It was I ugh, I hated it and I was like oh, I'm so you know glad what you hated it this is I such to ruin your day such an Andrew movie <laughs> it wasn't an Andrew movie I didn't say that it's my yes, favorite it movie I said it's, if we're gonna do found footage you kind of have to do this movie I know I I, I, get I agree it. with what he's saying I get it absolutely yeah and like it, yeah I I agree with you that it you know. I'm glad that it came out before Blair Witch, so they knew what not to do when they recorded I don't Blair know Witch. if it was necessarily scripted, other than, like, his doing the documentary parts, because the dialogue didn't seem scripted to me. Yeah. It seemed kind of bad, so it seemed like it was off the cuff. I'm going back to camp, man! <laughs> going back to camp, man! Dude, that, that, every time that they I did that... Like, so that guy oh was the God. worst. Yeah. Stewart? <laughs> Lucas? Was or, no, uh, no, Jim Stewart. Dude, so, okay, why did, also, why did everybody... Why did everybody have a weird name? Oh, it was um, just Stephen, so... Locus, Ryan, and... Uh, well, that's actually, if you look in the, if you watch the credits, yeah. Ryan is that, that, they're all their real names, Jeez. except Locus is Locus. his first name, is his name is actually Lucas. Yeah, it's right. definitely not, it's, it's like in the movie, it's not <laughs> Locus. Lucas, it's Locus. Yeah, like, Locus, okay, like a yeah. locust. I feel like oh, that's, they're, they're, they're just trying to be weird, paranormal TV people, yeah. which, it's, like, okay. It's almost so bad that it's funny. Yeah, I, I would yeah. agree. I mean, like it's the, I feel like the acting is is like kind of it, supposed to make well, you laugh what it, a little yeah, bit. Well, I mean, like who, their budget is nine hundred dollars. So <laughs> it's basically us acting, right? right. There. We should make a movie for nine hundred dollars. I'm saying you could do it. I think we, we <laughs> you probably could do it in your did. woods in the back. <laughs> <laughs> just go, yeah. Boom. I am Michael Walsh. <laughs> There'd be I, monsters in this. Yeah, There'd be monsters in these woods. <laughs> Based off of mythology, Cat seems to think that there's something living in over here. Woods. There's a hole in the woods that Cat thinks leads to monsters. Between our out house of the and ground. the apartment complex yes. up on the top of the hill, in there's these, in, monsters. In these fifty yards of woods, <laughs> many people have disappeared over the years. Is there it the is Jersey Devil? Fence. Is it the Jersey <laughs> Devil in Massachusetts? We hope to find out today. Um, one thing I will say that I found a little bit disappointing, and, and I think this is, you know. It's a criticism, but not really, because, again, they're working on a $900 budget. I was disappointed at how little about the Jersey Devil there was in this movie. I think that when I read what the premise of this was, I was intrigued, because I love cryptid shit. I think that's a great idea. But then it's really not about the Jersey yeah, Devil Yeah, you don't see all. any of that. You don't see anything except for maybe a few. They don't even really talk about the legend of the Jersey Devil at no. all. I think you're supposed to obviously go into this movie having a prior knowledge of what the Jersey Devil folklore is. And if you don't, you might just be like, okay, well, what what the fuck is this? Yeah. Um, speaking of which, do you guys know what the Jersey Devil is actually like supposed to be? Have you ever like no. seen like the drawing? I know what it looks or... like. It's like a hoofed creature. With, yeah, so like basically, a dinosaur face or okay, some shit. Okay, but did they actually yeah. say that? I didn't. Catch did they actually that say at all. what? What what the Jersey like in the documentary? I didn't catch what it was. They at all. show one photo of it, which is this photo here. As I rotate my computer screen for you guys, of okay. what the Jersey Devil is. That's that's a that's a drawing. Does he have slippers on? That's an artist. <laughs> like, oh, they're supposed to be hooves. <laughs> <laughs> those are supposed to be hooves. 
I know this is uh, not not conducive for podcasting, but we're looking at an image of a 1909 drawing of the Jersey Devil that was published in the Philadelphia Bulletin. But here's what the description is for the Jersey Devil, uh, according to Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, it's said to inhabit the Pine Barrens in South New Jersey, and the creature is often described as a flying biped with hooves, but there are many variations. The common description is that of a bipedal kangaroo-like or wyvern-like creature. A wyvern? Wyvern? Wyvern is a dragon. Uh, with a horse or goat-like head, leathery bat-like wi- bat wings, horns, small arms with clawed hands, legs with cloven hooves, and a forked tail. It has been re- reported to move quickly and is often described as emitting a high-peached, quote, blood-curdling scream. It's a high what? So high in a, a high-peached, high-pitched, <laughs> Jesus Christ. So in, in other words, a totally believable type of animal, Oh, yeah, right? they, like, they, they're all over the place. <laughs> oh, my God. So, I mean, it, yeah, I think this is definitely one of those things. I mean, I, I think that there are weird animals out there that we don't know about, but this seems like one of the ones that is a little bit more far-fetched um, and probably was invented as like an old wives tale to scare kids and get them to yeah. go to bed earlier back in New Jersey. Or either people are just hallucinating and like coming up with like there's like a dog over there and they're like, Oh look, I has got hearts yeah. and wings. Yeah. I'm just you know, I, I just can't envision a scenario where like, you know, Polly D and the Jersey Shore people are wandering around the Pine Barrens and running into a cloven hoop now that's dragon a movie I'd watch. goat monster. Actually that would Guidos <laughs> versus the Jersey Devil, that would be an awesome, awesome horror movie to do. Guidos versus the Jersey yeah, Jersey Shore versus the Jersey Devil. <laughs> that would be a, a pretty good one. You know what our movie could be called too when we make it? The Last Popcast. The Last Popcast. Last Popcast. Popcast. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. I Last Popcast. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see. So '98 actually kind of a sneaky good year for horror. Um, in a in a decade of horror that wasn't that great, and there are a few movies that stand out to me in here. Uh, Blade, the original Blade movie, pretty not good. Bad, not bad. I've uh, never been a huge fan of the Chucky franchise, but we did get Bride of Chucky in mm-hmm. 1998. I liked that movie. That movie's okay. It's yeah. got Jennifer Tilly as the Bride of Chucky. Um, quite possibly one of my favorite monster movies of the 90s. Uh, Deep Rising came out in 1998. Deep Rising. Never seen that? No. I've probably seen it, and I just don't remember. So it's directed by the guy that directed the Brendan Fraser Mummy movies, Stephen Summers, and it's basically a group of mercenaries that are robbing an ocean liner. And the ocean liner gets attacked by a sea monster. Oh, cool. Uh, Treat Williams is the main guy Treat in it. <laughs> it's fucking really, really good. Uh, the, the the visual effects don't hold up as good as... Uh, I wouldn't think so. But it, it, it's a solid movie. It's an, it's a, If you know if you want to watch a 90s B-horror monster movie, it's a good time. Absolutely. Sounds right up my alley. Um, also, Scream, but with aliens. The Faculty uh, came oh, out yeah. in 1998. That's an underrated movie. I saw that. Really? You've never seen The Faculty and you love Scream? I know. Oh, I would watch that with you in a heartbeat. Okay. It's got your boy Josh Hartnett in it. I know. A ton of I people might are in that have movie. I just, Hartthrum. like, maybe way back I saw it. I just, yeah. It's not in my... I'm sure you, know. you probably did. See, that's a movie I'm surprised that you didn't, like, own on VHS, mm-hmm. knowing you. But, uh, yeah. The Faculty came out in 1998. Also in 1998, Halloween H20, 20 yep. years later, which is uh, which saw the return of Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode for the first time before this new series of sequels. Uh, we also got I Still Know What You Did Last Summer dun, dun, in 1998. Dun, dun. I saw that. Andrew, dun. we also got uh, Phantasm 4, Oblivion oh, in baby. 1998. Phantasm 4. Yep. The Andrew special. <laughs> and then also probably one of the worst received remakes or worst received movies of all time is the Gus Van Sant, Vince Vaughn starring Psycho remake. Which is basically just a shot, a shot, shot for shot, shot remake, remake of Psycho with Vince Vaughn as Norman Bates. Vince Vaughn was good in it. Yeah, I didn't I thought, think I think he Vince was Vaughn in those terrible. type of roles, like domestic disturbance. Yeah, he's pretty good in like those type of like Psycho. I mm-hmm. yeah, I don't think Vince Vaughn is bad in dramatic roles. I actually kind of like like a lot of people thought he was the worst part of se- of season two of True Detective, and I actually thought he wasn't as terrible as people advertised. His wife was in that. His wife was yeah, and okay. she's actually she's in that Yellowstone show now. Um, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I think if people go back now, knowing that it's obviously not as good as season one, season two of True Detective is not that bad. No. Colin Farrell's character is fucking awesome in that season. It's it's, it's not bad. It's confusing. It's, it's overcomplicated. It's, it's hard it's because not bad. it comes after for the first season, which, which was is so good. Arguably one of the greatest seasons of television ever made. So you can't compare. It's like not yep. fair. Yep. Uh, also in Look 1998. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Did you mean to rhyme? <laughs> 
I'm a poet, and I didn't even know it. <laughs> also in 1998, we got Ringu, which is the Japanese version of yep. the Ring, yep. the one that inspired the American remake, the original Ring called Ringu. Also, another innovative 90s slasher that's really not that bad. Uh, Urban Legend came out in 1998. Oh, I saw that. I would say, you must have seen Urban yeah. Legend. You're a yep. fan of slashers. Have you seen Urban I don't Legend? I think so, yeah, no. it's good. It's got Jared Leto oh. uh, amongst uh, many, many other actresses and actors that you'd be like, oh shit, okay, I know who that is. <laughs> and then also, uh, John Carpenter's Vampires came out in 1998, which has I watched James that, like, Woods. Not too long ago. Decent movie, not bad. Like, this is actually not a bad year in the 90s for horror, so some 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 notable stuff. Notable stuff. Um, not a lot of, you know, trivial knowledge. I decided I'm going to stop calling it facts or quick facts. I'm going to start calling it trivia, because I like that better. Um... Not a whole lot of trivia out about this movie because it's uh, you know it's a movie that again was made for nine hundred dollars and that was probably the biggest piece of trivia that I had. Well, I was surprised to see that internationally it, it grossed four million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So, this movie? Yeah, yeah, off of a nine hundred dollar budget. Yep. Like box office in the states, it was only like twelve thousand or something like that. Wow. Yeah. But worldwide, four million, which yeah. is I mean, that's insane. Talk about a uh, nice little. Uh, for 900 bucks? Yeah. yeah. Jesus. So one thing that's interesting about this movie is that it was dubbed... This is according to IMDb, so take this with a grain of salt. I, I think all these facts that are on there are vetted, but uh, this is dubbed the first quote-unquote desktop feature film. It was the first film to be filmed, edited, and screened entirely digitally. No film was involved at all, so oh, it was no not kidding. shot yeah. on film. Everything was digital. Uh, let's see. The premiere screening was released digitally to cinemas across the United States via satellite and shown using Texas Instruments DLP digital <laughs> cinema projectors. Wow. So the calculator people. <laughs> oh my Interesting. God. That's insane. Remember when you used to have to get Texas Instruments calculators? Oh, my T83 plus, like graphing calculators? Yeah. Remember when people told you that you'd need that type of math in everyday life? Yeah. I have no idea how to use this. What is even going on right now? Sign, cosine, and yeah. Why do I need all this? Am I getting a loan? Do I need a cosine? Right. E exactly. On? Exactly. Uh, Andrew, does the name Holly Madison mean anything to you? Holly Madison? Mm -hmm. It's not a porn star, is it? <laughs> uh, so Holly Madison is actually an actress and model. And by model, I mean a Playboy model. She was in that show, The Girls Next Door. Uh, apparently, this is her acting debut in the last broadcast. Oh, that's her in there. Uh, I, no, she doesn't play the the video the video oh, okay, uh, no, that was else. the video girl. I forget what her name was. So, according to IMDb, this is Holly Madison's debut. Let's see what her character's name is in this, because she's like the only person that's in this movie of, of note. note. Uh, and of course, now I can't find it on here. But apparently, if you're looking for it, this is the acting debut of one Holly Madison. When the hell was... I didn't remember seeing oh. another girl in the movie. Yeah. All right, so she plays, according to IMDb, uh, Miss Lady Bright Eyes. Miss Lady Bright Eyes. Yes. I remember the old lady mm -hmm. that they interviewed. That was Shelly at the end. Yep. And Who's then the, um, Miss Lady Bright Eyes? The, the, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the, the girl that's restoring all the video. Uh, yeah. Her name's Michelle. Michelle yeah. Monarch. Uh, so not her. There's another another part that's played by Holly Madison of the uh, the girls Why next am door. I'm not remembering. Her. Yeah. yeah so. Well, I mean, it wasn't we a very memorable movie. movie like so. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I will say though, one the the scene at the end where he kills the video lady. Yeah. That actually looks like a snuff film. That's kind of disturbing. I thought yeah. that was pretty good. Like I'm like yeah. wondering, did he actually murder her? Right. Because like he's got a plastic bag over her head for yeah. Like, yeah. quite a while. Right. And it doesn't look like a dummy either. <laughs> it looks like a person. Like, it yeah, it does look like a, a I mean, real so I'll give him credit for that. That's pretty good. Yeah. So I guess it's probably now as good a, as good of a time as any to talk about the ending to the movie, where essentially it's not revealed. It's n revealed. You're, you're led to believe the entire time that one of the guys that went out into the woods with them, that guy Jim, right? Jim Seward. Jim that Seward. Yeah was the one that committed the murders. Uh, turns out it was not him, and it was actually the guy that's doing the documentary, whose name is escaping me right now. Uh, his name is David, David Lee, who is the filmmaker. It's revealed that um, he is actually the killer, yet he's still making the documentary about these killings, even though he is the killer. Um... Which I didn't... Power move. Uh, yeah, power, power, power move. He wanted to prove that he could get away with it, and then he would prove himself to be the one that was guilty of it through yeah. his documentary. Because throughout it, he's going that he was trying to prove that this guy didn't have the right. in intellect or any capabilities to do these murders. Right. So it was more just like a power trip. I yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of got that vibe as well. Um, 
So yeah, nothing related to the Jersey Devil involved in this case. Just would have been cool if he turned into the Jersey Devil at the end and went. Mm, yeah, that would have been awesome. I don't I think don't they have the budget. Like the budget for that. No, <laughs> yeah. like what would that have looked like? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like they would have, would have needed uh, a significantly higher budget <laughs> yeah. for just that one portion of the movie alone, let alone everything else. Yeah, the end was definitely disappointing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Can we didn't, talk? I didn't see it coming. Didn't see it coming, but. I, I know, like, I will come on that, that it was good that like it was a surprise at the end. Like, yeah. He didn't think that he was the guy doing it. Yeah. They did go off the found footage, though, at the very end of the movie, though, which was interesting. Yeah, and I I, I have something I want to talk about. You, you said you were going to try and say something, so you I was going to say, the one thing that I, in the whole movie, the IRC thing, mm-hmm. in, what is it? Real oh, Internet chat? Relay Chat? Internet yeah. Relay Chat, I think. I loved how they, when they first, um, when they were doing the whole... Um, whole thing like explaining what it was and then they said there was that call that came in and said like um why don't you show the jersey devil but it was like it sounded like speak and spell it's like yeah. why don't you show yeah, yeah. yeah. it was clearly devil. somebody like, like <laughs> somebody, somebody clearly just like reading a line through like a fucking voice modifier yeah. but then they didn't even say what irc was until like halfway through and they just like flashed it on the screen well and probably because when like, this movie came out that was probably like a common thing uh, yeah i guess i mean yeah. it was, I was back like, in what the is the early IRC? days that was yeah but i thought that was kind it's of like funny. aim instant messenger exactly. yeah, yeah. I mean, I thought everyone knows what AIM is, but probably not. Yeah. Uh, no, nobody probably knows. Only, like, old people know. Only yeah. a very small percentage. Yeah. <laughs> you know what movie I, I um, found myself thinking about a lot while I was watching this and I could really see the influence that this movie had on it was Creep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah that, so, like, I, you know, obviously, like, you know, different plots... But with the whole, you know, the person that's filming everything and, like, you know, the, like the killer, like, I, I got very similar vibes. So I, I think that, you know, that's definitely a movie that drew influence from the last, the last broadcast when I was uh, watching this movie. Speaking of AIM, I'm curious, what were your uh, screen names? Cirque Clown, duh, because oh, that's still. for everything. <laughs> Shamrock Walshy. Nope, and then, well, I had, yeah. like, several. I had, like, BB Girl 5 and, like... Night Owl something and Cap, was... Cappy That's Me. <laughs> Cappy That's Me. I, I think was... I remember Cat B That's Me. Mm-hmm. I was XX Fatal Hands XX. <laughs> <laughs> you emo fuck. <laughs> XX Fatal Hands XX. Oh my god. Oh, I love it. That's amazing. I love That's it. awesome. Uh, names. <laughs> so, I guess my last question for you guys before we wrap this up. Do you think that this would have been a better movie if it hadn't been found footage, or do you think that the found footage element added to the uh, the overall quality? I think the of this only reason movie? worth watching this movie is because it's found footage. Yeah, yeah, agreed. I agree. I agree there. Yeah. I also think that this is the type of movie that would be perfect for a remake. Like mm-hmm. if you loosely, if you take the loose part of the plot yeah. and you were to redo this in twenty twenty two. With an actual budget behind it and some actual Jersey Devil shit, yeah, I think you could I make this into a yeah. really, into really good movie. Um, I think the it's bones a great are there. Good bones. idea. It's good bones, good bones. <laughs> exactly. Very good bones. A lot of bone and boner <laughs> talk oh today. What are, we, what, are we, what are we doing here, guys? What are we doing? All right. Any final thoughts on uh, the last broadcast? Uh, no. I mean, I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like if you're it, well, we should mention too. It's free. You just it's on YouTube. Yeah, that's, that's the actually only great point. area you can watch it. Free, point. free on YouTube. Yeah, you won't find it anywhere yeah. else. Yeah, my usual go to go to move is if you Google a particular movie, you can it'll show you right on there like where it's streaming, whatever platform it's on, and this was nowhere. So yeah. you just if you if you search for it on YouTube, it's there. It's free. You can watch it. And uh, yeah, that's that's how we watched it. So right on YouTube, As and it I mean, should it's be some, free. Yeah, free. It's, it's an hour. And, it's an hour and twenty five minutes. Um, which feels a little long. It, it could have been shorter. Short. It could have been shorter. It they feels did a little do, long. They do the same scenes a lot. I, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's. I mean, I would say you know, if you're looking for something to watch, turn on the lights off, throw it on YouTube, uh, take an edible, and if watch wanna, the last broadcast. If you want to take a trip back to the nineties, yeah, feel, then just do that. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. All right, you guys. Well, I think that's going to do it for this episode on the last broadcast. Uh, and next week, we will have either the Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequel, requel, whatever it is, or we will have As Above, So Below. To be decided. Well, to be determined. Be. TBD. But anyway, here's where you can find more of us online. First, on our website at apod.com, A H H P O D.com. We're on YouTube and Facebook to search for America's Hometown Horror. You'll find us. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Twitter is at Hometown Horror. Instagram at Hometown Horror Pod. And you can also email us at Hometown Horror Podcast at gmail.com. And you can listen to our show 
pretty much anywhere that you get your podcasts. Uh, you can also find us on Factor Fiction on your local cable access news <laughs> network, uh, along with uh, Stephen. What was his name? Avcast and uh, Locus <laughs> Locus Wheeler and Locus Wiener. and Reen Clacken will be their guests on the uh, on the next. You, to won't, last you broadcast. won't see Jonathan Frakes. No Jonathan Frakes, yeah. which. Yeah, I mean, Jonathan Frakes was definitely doing fact or fiction. No. No, he wasn't it at was that the, point? It was, it, so it was the same year that okay. this came out was okay. fact or fiction, so I was, like, curious about that. Cause it yeah. Was, it was okay. 90, both 98. Interesting. So, I wonder okay. if they saw that. Jonathan Frakes watching, he's like, I like that idea. All right. <laughs> all right, guys. That's all we have for today, and come back next week for another found footage episode. Say goodbye to your listeners. Adios, muchachos. Later. Bye. Bye. Good evening. Hey everyone, it's Mike from America's Hometown Horror, and just wanted to say thank you again for listening to another episode of our show, because of course, we would be nothing without you listeners. If you are interested in more local Plymouth podcasts, I would highly recommend you check out uh, some shows by our cohorts on the Inebriart Podcast Network. That's right, the Inebriart Podcast Network, folks. In addition to America's Hometown Horror, you can find the Inebriart Podcast, Bar Talk, Theme Park Legends, Retro Redoctopus and Old Colony Cast, head on over and give them a listen.